Kia ora, good evening. Another child has fallen victim to a driveway accident in New Zealand, prompting renewed calls for safety awareness. A five-year-old boy died at the scene yesterday at a property in Pocono, south of Auckland, after an incident involving a trailer. This marks the fourth such death so far this year, including that of a seven-year-old child who was killed at a rural property near Wallace Town in Southland only last month. KidSafe Aotearoa has released safety reminders for autumn and winter, calling for parents of toddlers and young children to be extra vigilant around driveways during the shorter days and longer nights. The organisation claims five children are killed each year on average after being run over on private driveways in New Zealand. Labour spokesperson for social development Sue Maroney was in the city today prompting, promoting sorry, Labour's Best Start policy and her own private members bill that would see parental leave extended from the current 14 weeks to 26 weeks. I asked her earlier about the Best Start initiative and the reasons for her proposed extension to paid parental leave. The Labour Party has said that we're prioritising children at this election. We have said that uh, families earning under $150,000 a year will get an additional $60 a, every week if they have a child under the age of one. And uh, if they are low income families, they'll get that $60 a week right up until the age of three for that child. Now that will make a huge difference for families and their options. People like Celia Lashley, of course, have been saying this sort of thing for almost 20 years now. Mm. And um, a large proportion of that was a Labour government. Why mm. now make these moves? Well, look, we've uh, always had strong policies in these areas. So it was the Labor government that introduced paid parental leave, for example, back in 2002. We now say it's time to extend paid parental leave to 26 weeks. We've had it at 14 weeks now for, uh, well, it hasn't moved since Labor went out of government. And yet we increased paid parental leave three times when we were in government since 2002. So I think Labor does have a strong track record of, of working in this area, but we now do recognise that compared with other OECD countries, we don't invest nearly enough. We are under half of the average in the OECD for investing in children under the age of five. The core of the issue is though really isn't it that I, uh, we were talking off camera about uh, I moved down in the late 90s, it was possible to have one parent actually at home full time, I'm not yeah. saying mother or father, but yeah. it was possible. Yes. Are we trying to, can we recreate that, will that happen again? I mean that's the ideal situation isn't it? Well that's a choice and a debate we need to have in this country. Labour believes that we can and we should actually aim for a high skill, high wage economy, not the low wage, low skill economy that we're trucking down under the current government. Because if we have a high wage, high skill economy, then families will have options. Now they might decide that they still wish to have two parents actually developing their careers and that's fine if that's an option that they're making not for necessarily financial reasons but because that's what they want to do as individuals. What we've got I think in New Zealand at the moment is that families have no choice. If they want a decent uh, home to live in then two parents do need to be out working and therefore we need these other supports in place to support them. Why is 14 weeks not enough? Well, 14 weeks, we're actually down at the... I mean, you did decide on that as the Labor government, that 14 weeks was enough. Yeah, we, we introduced it at 12 weeks initially, and then we increased it to 14 weeks after a couple of years, and we also extended it so that self-employed parents could enjoy paid parental leave as well. Uh, look, time's moved on, and we now find ourselves at the bottom of the OECD rankings when it comes to the duration of paid parental leave. There's only one country in the OECD below us now, and that's the United States of America, because they have zero weeks. So uh, time has moved on. We've now got a lot more research and evidence that tells us if we can get that to six months, then we'll better be able to support exclusive breastfeeding. The World Health Organisation now has plenty of research and evidence that says if we can actually have children exclusively breastfed to six months, then we can actually reduce our health care costs substantially in this country. The New Zealand Police and the Associate Transport Minister Michael Woodhouse are urging motorists to drive carefully over the extended break following four deaths on the road over Easter. The number of people killed in crashes during the long weekend is the highest it has been for three years. Three people died last Easter while there were no deaths in 2012. 
Police say they will continue to have a highly visible presence on the road over the remaining week with a particular focus on speed. The reduced four kilometres per hour threshold runs through till Monday. Meanwhile, Tourism New Zealand, the New Zealand Transport Agency and Air New Zealand have clubbed together to target Chinese tourists in an effort to promote road safety before they get behind the wheel. Staying with police, police have recorded a 22% drop in alcohol-related offences since law changes came into full effect at the end of last year. Serious assaults, public, vi public place violence and disorder offences between 8pm and 8am fell by 1,258 in the 10 weeks following the impl implementation of the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act 2012. Police say the biggest impact on reducing crime has come from the introduction of maximum trading hours. Stay with us after the break. We preview the Southern Festival of the Arts and a visiting Malaysian mayor gives the city and the Southern Institute of Technology the big thumbs up. Kia ora and welcome back to South Today News. Last month a delegation from the Southern Institute of Technology visited the region of Sarawak in Malaysia to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Sarawak Skills Development Centre and the International College of Advanced Technology. The agreement pays the way for SIT courses to be partially delivered in the Malaysian city of Kuching while students completing, with students completing their studies in Invercargill. Visiting the city over the last two days was Mayor of Kuching city, Datuk Abang. Mr Abang was shown the sights by his Invercargill counterpart, Tim Shadbolt. This is a reciprocal visit, a result of uh, Mayor Tim's visit to Kuching. So I was incidentally in Christchurch for my uh, son's graduation just a few days back and I was thinking uh, that it would be a good opportunity to just come down. So I ring up Mayor Tim and he was very kind enough to say, well, come over because uh, you just had your city day, I think, yesterday. Yeah, he was supposed to be doing, you know, uh, things which uh, he shouldn't do, like uh, taking me around on tours and whatnot. I'm really, really One mayor to another, yeah, though. Well, You've got yeah. to entertain a visiting yeah, mayor. Yeah, yeah. I'm very appreciative. He's very kind uh, to... to to more or less uh, take me around and uh, well there was dinner last night was very nice for the first time I've uh, really tested I've read about it I've seen it on TV real fresh bluff oyster <laughs> my god I can tell you that uh, this will be something that I can talk about for for you know for weeks to my friend in back in Malaysia you got yeah. a chance to have a look at SIT of course that was what that memorandum of understanding is about isn't it is uh, seeing whether Malaysian students could come to yes. Invercargill yeah in fact uh, sometime last year me team uh, came over uh, together with a few uh, officers from I think it was Penny if I'm not mistaken yeah and Mr Barrett uh, so I was very impressed by the fact that um, in Bergagil is going to be something like uh, Christchurch, where Canterbury University is concerned. So, uh, I think... Uh, you mean a lot of Malaysian students or, or opportunities for Malaysian students? Uh, I've not met any uh, this very short visit because I just arrived <laughs> yesterday. But I'm sure that uh, if uh, they were to come here, they'll be very comfortable. Because uh, I've just learned what... Uh, Zero fees is all about. Uh, it's something which I think uh, is uh, very attractive, and I see that also uh, Invercargill is a very peaceful, is a very friendly uh, city, uh, and um, even for those with families, if they were to come over, it provides them with that uh, you know that atmosphere to conducive not, to learning. Yes, not only conducive to learning but uh, family life. So if, uh, say, uh, graduates were to come up, I mean, postgraduates to, to, to thinking about uh, bringing over their family, uh, I think Invercargill is, is a nice place. New Zealand had a seasonally adjusted net gain of 3,800 migrants in March 2014, the second highest gain on record, according to Statistics New Zealand figures. 
The highest was in February 2003 with 4,700 arrivals when a large number of overseas students arrived to study at New Zealand universities. Net migration has been positive and mostly increasing since September 2012. The increase since, since then was mainly due to fewer New Zealand citizens leaving for Australia as well as more non-New Zealand citizens arriving. In the March 2014 year, migrant levels numbered 98,000, up 14%, and migrant departures numbered 66,100, down 21%, resulting in a net gain of 31,900 migrants, marking the highest gain since the January 2004 year. The 6th Southland Festival of the Arts starts tomorrow. Venture Southland Creative Projects Manager Ange Newell says there's something for everyone during the month-long festival and she's encouraging Southlanders to see and experience as much of the festival as possible. There's everything on the menu, Hunter. We've got dance, comedy, theatre, music, literature. Pretty much it covers the full gamut of the arts genres. How hard is it to make those decisions about what acts to bring in? Is it quite a process? Oh, it's a... It's a real privilege for me to be able to kind of pick and choose the sort of shows that we can get. Obviously availability has something to do with it, looking at what things are already coming in for the festival as well and then choosing things that complement it. It's, it's great fun actually putting the, the programme together. Um, and uh, I think in the last few years there has just been this plethora of New Zealand work that has been available for touring and, and bringing in, so um, we're pretty spoilt for choice actually. Let's talk about some of the highlights. What will be a feature for you, a couple of plays? Well, Hotel is one show that I've been very keen to get for a few years now, and it's been doing the festival circuit around New Zealand for about the past six years. And it's a fly-on-the-wall, kind of slightly voyeuristic concept in that 20 people come into a hotel room, this is at the Ascot Park in one of their suites, and you sit along the wall and literally watch the dramas unfold in front of you. So there are five different characters in the room who are oblivious to each other. So the Ascot's the theatre? The Ascot is the theatre, uh, and particularly that suite. So you see their lives evolve and, uh, well, within the course of an hour, what they go through, their, their, the comedy, the tragedy, the real life, they're people like us, or maybe not. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an interesting concept. So it's theatre in a motel room, in a hotel room. And the bitch's box? The bitch's box, well those of you who know foot rot flats of course know that the bitches are put into a box um, to avoid them getting pregnant. And so these two bitches who are two wonderful actresses who have received outstanding re reviews for the show, they pretty much are in this box and take off all the other dogs that they know. So uh, you know there's the, the Jack and Russell um, and there's uh, the house dog who of course is pampered and a bit, bit simple really for their mind. Um, so they, they talk about and take off all these other dogs that are around them. So if you love dogs and you love comedy, The Bitch's Box is definitely one for you. And something for all ages as well, no one's missed out. That's right, well we've got children taken care of as well from zero to three for example with Over the Rainbow. So that's a chance for mums and dads and grands to bring in their absolute tiny ones into a beautiful environment where there'll be song and music and percussion and bubbles and you know, things to touch and a great way of stimulating your baby. So from zero right through to as old as you want to be, you can come to the festival. You mentioned the high standard of theatre around in New Zealand at the moment. Is, is this because of um, festivals like this, that there is regular work now, that um, people can firstly get to see these works of art or plays, but also that um, it's lifting the standard overall? I think so. And you know, there has been this proliferation of drama schools and academies and that over the last probably 10, 15 years. And so people are coming out now really highly qualified and are creating outstanding work. And I think the industry's really come of age in New Zealand where we're seeing these amazing shows that actually are internationally recognised. So shows like Red Leaps, Paper Sky that we've got here. Now that company um, is touring overseas now with that work. Um, so. I, th I think that what we're seeing now is sort of the result of years and years of development in the arts in New Zealand. Uh, so we're looking forward to sort of showcasing those in the festival this year. That's all from the news team for today. Sport is along next. Make sure you have a great evening.